I'm back! Well, here we are again. Another one of those darn reviews. <laughs> Why not? That's what I say. What have we got today? Well, I've got this old obsolete piece of kit. Sorry, equipment. You don't call it kit, do you? Yeah, this old obsolete piece of equipment that I bought for threepence or 50 cents, whatever you might call it in America. The English boys will know what I'm on about. But anyway, I lashed out on this Mesa Boogie, because don't call it Mesa Boogie, that's not quite right to you English guys. Mesa Boogie, Electrodyne. Now that doesn't look like, well, not much like a Mesa Boogie amp, does it? I mean, it's got, it's got a Mesa engineering uh, sticker on it, or label on it, and that's about it. What's going on? Well, before we get into any of that, what the hell am I doing reviewing a product that's long gone? Or dead, or belly up, or... You can use the other words if you want. Uh, I know what I mean, and I'm sure you do. Well, I'll tell you why I'm, I, I'm reviewing this an inside and outside review. Well, because it's not a standard Mesa amp, and it does things that other amps can't reach. That's a great answer, as Carling said. Anyway, what this thing is supposed to be, and I say supposed to be, I have plugged it in. I have to admit. We'll come back to that later. There'll be a video at the end of it being played. But it, what it's supposed to be is, first of all, on the clean channel, because it, it purports to be a three-channel channel amp. Ugh, channel amp. Is it's clean, like a fender clean. And then it moves off into what it calls low, which is like a, a sort of lightly distorted, or it can be a bit more than light if you want distorted sound and then high is a bit more distorted like a you know one of them sort of uh, 70s 80s martial heads on steroids that's what they say i don't like the steroids a bit more viagra than steroids i think well enough for all that let's think a bit more about this amp and you know what's it all about well anybody who isn't in the know on this amp would say well it's just a Marshall copy, isn't it? Or a Fender Clean copy type of thing. And it's only got, look, it's only got one set of uh, control knobs, so the bass will be the same on every channel, and the treble will be, and, and, and so on and so forth. But actually, it doesn't say it's got any channels, which is a bit weird. And as regards sharing these knobs, well, that could be the case, that could be the problem. And, you know, like one guy said to me, he said, oh, yeah, I've got one of them 5153s, you know, the Eddie Van Halen white one, the 50 watt. He said, it's a great amp. He says, only one problem. It's got these shared EQs. He says, it's crap. <laughs> so he sold it. Now, if you think of an amp like this, well, think that it's got no channels. In reality, it has. But let's think that it hasn't. And then you've got these knobs that control the same thing on every one. And then you've just got this, you know, this clean, low and high. It's almost like uh, saying, well, boost or extra boost. That, that sort of thing. A bit weird, really. But this is where the fun starts. I didn't review it for nothing. This knob here, for example, this bass knob. Or we could choose the mid if you want. Or we can use, choose the treble, or the master, but we can't choose the presence. Because every one of those knobs except the presence. You know what's behind one of them knobs, don't you? It's, it's, it's a variable resistor, basically. A pot. Well, the bass, for example, has got two pots, plus an open pot, for want of a better word. No pot. So two pots or no pot. Well, that makes three, doesn't it? Let me go. One, two, three. Yeah, it makes three. So in effect, what you've really got is an amplifier with no pots on a channel, an amplifier with some pots on a channel, and an amplifier with, even though it looks like the same knob, some different pots. Well, that's a bit weird. Of course, the problem is, if you think about this, imagine having a potentiometer, you know, turns around like so, and you've got another one behind it. Well, when you turn the shaft that goes through them both, well, <laughs> they both do exactly the same thing, don't they? 
So that's a bit of a problem. Why would you bother putting a second potentiometer on if it does the same thing? Well, here's the secret. The secret of the Electrodyne is that it doesn't do the same thing on the second pot. So when you switch, quote, channels, we'll call them them, what happens is it switches across to the other pot. And the other pot has a different, let's, uh, let's describe this other pot, the second pot, as having different results for the same position. That's the easy way. So if the first pot was on 100 when it's there, the second pot might be on 25 when it's there. Get me? And as for the third pot, well, you go smoke your own. <laughs> Now then, that opens up some really weird things with this amp. And it's probably one of the reasons why uh, originally they discontinued it. And they, they fell in price in America, I do know, and got as low as, I think, $600 on clearance. Just shows you how much money they make when they don't do clearance. <laughs> but that's another story. Thing is, it's a 45 watt or a 90 watt amp. And I can tell you now, because I have tried it. 45 watts blow you out this room <laughs> on this amp. Uh, so, so don't think it's a quiet amp for your bedroom. As it stands by itself, it probably isn't. You don't get the best out of it. Having said that, uh, there are a lot of features on this amp that make it absolutely, totally unique. And I can tell you, it does sound absolutely stunning. It isn't at all what you think it is. It's nothing like a Mesa Boogie, as you understand it, unless you've owned one. And if you haven't owned one, well, you might be one of them guys on one of the forums chatting away saying, oh, them are great, but he's never owned one. Well, now's your chance to find out the truth about the Electrodyne amp and how great it was or it wasn't. That's a good idea, isn't it? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the amp here and we're going to zoom the camera and just take a look at the front and see what we've got and what we haven't got. And have a look at the back and see what we've got and what we haven't got. And then I'm going to zoom the chassis out and we're going to have a run through the chassis because this chassis is a little bit different than a lot of them. And uh, how it's been done is very, honestly, it's really innovative and clever. But you'd expect that from Mesa Boogie, wouldn't you? That's the sort of company they tend to be. That doesn't mean that other people aren't. That just means this was a leader of the pack at the time. And certainly uh, they sold quite a few, but not enough to keep it in business. Then they moved on to, uh, I think, the Royal Atlantic, they called it, which was like almost like one of these, but with more knobs. Well, that's great if that's what you want, but if you're used to Marshall, of course, uh, like I am, and you can't afford... <laughs> well, maybe you can. Uh, but you might not be able to afford it in America, because Marshall is way up there in price, whereas Mesa Boogie over here is way up there in price. So, six of one, half a dozen of the other. I can have a cheap Marshall, I can have an expensive one of these. By the way, just before we do go and look at the front, this was a cheap one, right? Cheap second user. Well, it could be tenth user for all I know. Well, the great thing about this one, being a second user amp, is I get all this extra, all this, uh, look at this. Oh, this wood's fantastic, man. It just, uh, it's just awesome. And what I'm thinking of doing on this one is taking off this bit of regular grill. And I've got some black alligator uh, vinyl coming just to put just in there. Black alligator. Yeah. If you've seen one of them, if you see, <laughs> no, I can't see it. If you've seen the whites of the eyes of a black alligator, you're probably dead. <laughs> Don't worry. Anyway, let's zoom down now. Look at the front. Look at the back. I, I can't wait to get inside because I know what Mesa Boogie kits generally like. Let's hope this one's the same. Well, who knows? I haven't been in there yet, but you can trust me, I'm going, and so are you. Hold on. Well, here we are around the front, just as you'd expect. Look, there's Tony. <laughs> well, let's look across the front of the amp. What we've got first of all is a 45 or 90 watt power switch. That's nice. We've got one in the middle, which is nothing. <laughs> Off, basically. Nice and simple. They expect it on most amps. You've got to stand by off and on. You've got a little light in here that, by the way, that uses a fender bulb, uh, part number 00216420049 for anybody that's got a bulb missing. There's a bulb missing on this, so I bought some in America. 
for I think four dollars or something. I don't know. It was cheap. Okay, moving along. It's such a simply boring amp, this. Uh, but trust me, it's worth the effort. You've got your master volume. I can tell you now, once you get much above that, <laughs> about there, you're going to be outside the room. It can be a loud amp. Regular presence, bass, mid, treble. We've got a volume for the channel. We'll call them channels. And we've got this clean, low, or high. And you do get a foot switch with it. Well, you may get a foot switch with it, with the second hand one that you buy, because you can't buy re new, really buy a new one now. Uh, I had to get a separate foot switch, and I got it off a guy in the States, and he sold it to me for $50, so you have an idea of what they go for. But we'll talk about the foot switch later, because I have a, a bit of a revelation regarding that. And lastly, we've got the input for the guitar. It's all simple and boring, you see what I mean? Anyway, apart from that, we've got the nice bit of wood which somebody eventually paid for when they bought it. And, uh, yeah, they would have paid a fair few hundred dollars more than I did. Well, they probably paid enough for that there that I paid for the amp. Wow. Let's, let's have a look around the back. Wow. This amp really is a bit of a monster. And I, I'm not just saying that either. It's, it's, it's a veritable beast. It's extremely loud with these 6L6s. But you can actually fit EL34s in this one. And not like the regular sort of Mesa similar class type of amp that, that, that's out there where you can have two 6L6s and two EL34s. This is either all EL34s or it's all 6L6s. These look like the original tubes to me. And there's the little bias select switch for EL34s or 6L6s. It's on 6L6 because that's what's in it. And when you switch three L34s, you get this little light. We've got the usual speaker outs. Four ohm or eight ohm, I'm afraid. That's it. We've got a slave out there with a volume for it. And down at the end here, we've got a couple of weird things. You can just see them on the video. We've got a thing at the top called a gain trim. And at the bottom, we've got a thing called clean level trim. Now, I'm going to talk about that a bit later, but basically what this does is relates to the balancing between the clean channel and the other two channels. Because with some of the settings, and it only having one set of knobs, effectively, uh, you need to sometimes balance that clean against the other two. Imagine cranking the, uh, the one master up and then cranking the volume up. Uh, you know, on high high channel, we'll call it that, and then switching to clean, it'll just blow your head off. So what you really got to do is back off the clean channel, and you do that in this area here. That's why they installed that. It's a really clever way of being able to use one set of knobs for the whole amp with three channels effectively. Moving back this way, we got a switch at the back for a foot switch. Nice, you don't have to have it on the front. Uh, here we've got uh, reverb. Now we've got defeat, high, low. It's in the high position currently. This is the amount of mix of the reverb. And the reverb can be on or off. And when it is off, it's completely out of circuit. We've got a return and send, and we've got a fuse. Well, that's all there is down the back. Doesn't look like much. Oh! I have to connect that up a bit later. I wouldn't worry about it for now. <laughs> so, it's a nice, simple amp. And also, one other thing, you, you can't quite see it from there, but just up there, inside the cab, is an Accutronics reverb. And it's a really nice one. I, I, I have played this amp, and it, it sounds awesome. You know, like the real nice fendery cleans with the, that reverb that you get on the, the really good fender amps. When I, uh, when I was buying this amp, I was in Guitar Center, and uh, basically there's a guy in there with a, a Fender basement head. I don't know which year it was, it was a really old one. Sounded awesome. And he was uh, playing around with it, you know, as you do, and I thought, what a fantastic sound. Anyway, I inquired about this one, and they said, oh yeah, yeah, we'll plug it you in. So they did. And off went the guy with the uh, the basement head, because that was his head that he was doing something with. And I plugged this in it. It sounded nigh on pretty much 
well, not the same, but extremely similar in that clean channel, you know, with the reverb and the rest. One of the reasons I actually bought it, uh, plus the fact, the condition it's in, it's like new. I've taken the back panels off here so you could see in, by the way. So don't get too excited <laughs> that there isn't any, because there is. I just took them off for later. Let's flip the chassis out and have a look inside. Now, first things first here, let's take a look at the amp uh, from above so we have a good idea of what we're looking at. Well, if you start at this end, right down here, that's a power transformer, and this is the American version. There's the power where it comes in, as you see on number, if somebody's interested, whether you are or you're not, doesn't matter. This is the uh, USA one, but there is an equivalent available on the internet. Uh, the one you want for Europe is uh, 561147. That's the European 240 volt jobby, or 230 or 220 volt, indeed. This one is 561146, which is the, uh, the USA one, as I said. You've got loads of stuff on here. You've got a choke, fancy that. Looks like you've got another choke over here, although I can't be sure what they are, really. <laughs> they don't tell me. And there's no uh, uh, schematic on the internet that I can find, so, ooh, nasty. Well, let's move on. You've got the tubes, what we've said can be 6L6 or ER34 is nice uh, as I said these are yeah slightly slacker than the others I'll check that we've got no less than seven 12 AX7s now you've got a driver for the reverb in there and I believe you've got a driver for the uh, send and return I think it is or something like that so it leaves you with no less than about five tubes for these three quote channels that are stuck on one set of knobs very interesting idea actually uh, of how they've done this and uh, it is an interesting uh, thing to look at and unless somebody's ever done this before well this is probably the first time you'll ever see inside one I haven't seen anything on the internet where anybody ever opens one of these and talks about it and shows you what's inside and then goes on to you know do the rest so to speak now, while you can't actually see this, uh, these sockets are mounted on a PCB inside. You might see a bit of that, but they are ceramic sockets. So, you know, you are getting a, an amp with uh, decent stuff on it. I don't think you'll see anything to do, any problems to do with heat. Uh, here you've got the reverb send and return. I'm not even sure what that is. It doesn't really tell you, but I'll figure it out later, no doubt. Got a few spare holes. Maybe they use the chassis for other things too. Let's flip it over and have a look inside where it matters. Now then, look at the build quality of that straight out of the box. Remember this amp isn't a new amp. This amp's uh, probably 2010, th that sort of era, 2011 maybe. More like 2010 from what I can see. But you can see the quality right from the outset is well, what you'd expect from Mesa Boogie. It really is the highest of quality. And I guess that's what you're paying for. You can compare the insides of this with many other amps and they don't come even near. You'll notice on the chassis, it's like an aluminium type of chassis. Yeah, I would say it is. But it's actually been aluminium welded on the corners. Now anybody that can remember the Axe FX review that I did and did actually see those appalling welding joints on, the, uh, on that product you can see that this is the way it should be and that other thing was absolutely awful and they charged that ridiculous amount of money for something that was like a twentieth as good as this what you see in here on these these weld joints theirs was down in the side and they had one little piece of pigeon uh, Pigeon excrement, we'll call it, uh, and they call that uh, welding. <laughs> Ridiculous. Now, looking at this, starting at this side, what we've got is we've got, uh, basically, this is the power transformer. Looks like a choke, probably is. And you've got your power, comes in at the top here, down in there, goes down to the switches, comes back and goes to this board down here. Now, I've got some photographs of this board that I'm going to be putting on the uh, Tony McKenzie website so you can see 
what's going on down there and what you'd need to do to change this to a 240 volt uh, unit. Unfortunately, it looks to me that on this power supply, you're not going to be able to uh, actually make this a 240 volt with this transformer in. So the transformer will need changing. You change these wires along here. Not too difficult. And you also change a few wires that go down here. You change that blue thing there, if you can see it. What's the black one at the side? Assuming you can see it. You have to change them out and change the fuse from 4 amp to 2 amp. So, not that difficult to do. It's just a question of changing a few wires and buying a transformer. The transformers can be a bit expensive, but they all are. That's just life. If you look along the back anyway, you can see that all the I.O. across the back here, at the top, there's the board. It's on a separate board, so the great thing I always like about separate boards is they're nice and repairable. And if it's not repairable, well then you're just buying the one board. You're not buying the whole thing. And down underneath there, I hope you can see where my screwdriver is, that's the board with the power tubes on. And you can see the sockets, there's one there, one there, one there, and one here. I can see the ceramic through there, although you won't. Moving on a bit further, we move down to this board. This is the pa this is no, I'll get that wrong. This is the preamp board. Uh, it's got some power regulation down there. A couple of capacitors here, but that's your basic preamp board. Well, it's far from basic in reality. Uh, I like how it's linked with these as well. I've never seen any problems on these type of links, uh, so that's all nice as well. And one of the things you do want to notice about this power supply, I have no information on this one, so I can't really give you much guidelines, but look, <laughs> you've got two wires joined together, plus a black. So you can find a schematic to this. I wouldn't mind a copy myself. And you've also got a grey one sitting along, idling up here, and an orange one sitting there. So there are certain choices within this uh, power transformer and its wiring. Uh, that I'm not really uh, able to give you the information about. Now what I want to do is to have a close up at those, uh, those uh, volume pots and tone pots that we talked about earlier being double mounted and that sort of thing. And there we are. If you look really closely down here you'll see you've got three wires on this inside pot and three wires on the back pot. They're actually two separate pots and depending on where you switch uh, channels and things like that is depending which of these are actually in operation. It's a very clever way of having one set of tone controls for example uh, on an amplifier that has a number of channels. Very clever indeed and probably unique to this amp. And just while we're on the uh, sort of close-up mode at the moment take a good look at the uh, little section down there for looks like regulating to me probably is. <laughs> And I'll have a quick scan across the uh, the board so you can see some of the features and build quality. It all looks pretty good. We zoom in down there. I can show you that thing we were talking about there. You can just see there's a blue MOV plus there's a black, the fast, the explosive type of uh, power. Mm. All very clever. I've also got other things on these uh, boards, of course, such as a few chips. Not sure what they do. I'm not going to look that close on this. And we've also got those other things to do with, usually to do with uh, channel switching. These type of things. Although I could be wrong, I've got no schematic, so. It's a no-brainer, I can't tell you. <laughs> and there's a little bit of Mesa Boogie on the board. DVR SML3 Electrodyne. This one says copyright 2008, but I really suspect that this amp was probably uh, made around 2010. Just from the dates that are sitting around on the board to be looked at. Okay, let's, well, let's whiz back over the top. We've seen enough in here, right? And there's a final shot just before we put this back in the chassis. 
as I said, the serial number on this one is uh, looks like BD or B0 000, 000418. Looks like the BD actually. So there you go. It's not as early in the uh, production run as some can be. And if you go and take a look down there, right there, on the gain trim. On the earliest of amps, what you'll find is there was paper labels stuck on the chassis. So this is a later amp. I'm back. <laughs> Fancy that. Well, as you can see, I've got the amp thrown back together. Sorry. Carefully built. And here it is in all its glory. Now in a little short while, what we're going to do is we're going to go out there, plate clean, Play it semi-clean and play it high, as they say on here. Low and high. All sounds good to me. Now, this amp isn't known to be like a, a Recto. It isn't known to be like a Root King 2, like a, any of the Rectifier series, because that isn't what it is. It was meant to be like a Fender Clean, which is really a Fender. <laughs> And it's meant to sound like Marshall and the other two, you know, with steroids and then with Viagra, if you get the drift. So, well, what if that's not enough? You know, some people say, all oh, these amps sounds flubby. Flubby, that's a great word. Yeah. Anyway, they say it sounds flubby, but does it? Well, it might do with 6L60s in. But if you noticed, I actually bought TL34s, if you can read that. And the reason I did that is that all these guys that, I hate to say it, they tend to sometimes mouth off without actually doing all the stuff you should do. And one of the things that you should do, if it's flubby, quote, is to use the L34s because they have far less bottom end, don't they? <laughs> Instead of moaning about your 6L60s in there, throw them in the bin, put the L34s in, then it won't be flubby. It'll be more like a Marshall. <sighs> of course, you won't have the same clean, will you? If clean's your bag, great amp, leave it as it is. If a bit more's your bag, well, you could do that. Or you could do the thing I'm going to do next. Well, I'm not going to do it next, but I'm going to be doing it, and it'll be another review. But it's worth the wait. Let me explain. There it is. The secret to your tone. No, not this tone. That tone. It's called a tone burst. But a lot of these guys that do the reviews, you know, they set it on a little bit of a thing and eh, you've seen them, haven't you? That's half a job, isn't it? Here's the pedal, Tone Burst. There it is. You can tell it because it's the, the red one. And it, this one actually has the least amount of distortion, for want of a better word. I don't think it has any distortion, if you want the truth. They, they sell it as almost like a distortion, but it's really a way of increasing the gain out of your pickups. The gain. No, I'm getting funny. The gain out of your pickups. So if you've got a Strat into one of these, and you don't play uh, clean all the time, you might need one of these. Now if you've got a, a Les Paul with humbuckers, or any similar sort of guitar, you might not need one of these, but it's a useful tool. Now also, I did have some guys, uh, when I did the sort of quick review of the PRS... Uh, uh, private stock guitar that I have, uh, they were saying, oh, it sounds great, you know, that's a great distorted tone, but how does it sound clean? Well, what better amp to uh, demonstrate that guitar being clean? And that's one of the things I'm going to do, but it's not the only thing I'm going to do. As I said, I'm going to use this pedal to give you different tones and saturations and all sorts of different things, maybe on the Strat or who knows what I'll do, but... Uh, as we do do it, I'm sure that you will be impressed with this amplifier and this pedal and maybe even the use of these uh, in the amp uh, and the differences that it makes. You will end up with an amplifier that sounds absolutely awesome. There's only one thing uh, that really uh, is not so dynamic and that is if you're one of these bedroom guys. Well, that's the volume of it. Now then. Before we go anywhere, I just want to talk about the uh, Electrodyne uh, and a little bit of a problem that I had. 
you're going to like this. Not as much as I did, but uh, you're going to like it. It just shows you what some of these people are like that sell you equipment. The Electrodyne didn't have a pedal. It was lost somewhere. And I thought, uh, oh, I'll pick one of them up. No problem. So I went to the Mesa Boogie site, and sure enough, there it was, in their shop. You know it. $59. That's about uh, £40. Remember that. So then I thought, well, <clears throat> they aren't going to sell me one. What should I do? So I decided to call my friendly guitar shop. So anyway, Tony goes along, as you would, to the local, uh, not so local, about 40 to 50 miles away, nearest Mesa Boogie dealer, and says, hey, give me a quote for one of these Electrodyne pedals. I'm thinking uh, 40 pounds, correct? Yeah. You couldn't be more wrong, man. Now let's say they put a bit of a mark upon. Let's say it's uh, 70 pounds. That's good, yeah? No. What about 100 pounds? That's 150 dollars. What about that? Nah, nah, you're wrong. Well, I'll tell you how much it was. It was, I got it wrong again. It was that much. 167 pounds. That's 240 dollars or 230 dollars for a piece of shit pedal <laughs> that costs 59 dollars from Mesa Boogie. Now listen, that distributor, that West Side distribution, oh and the dealer, uh, PMT, I ain't gonna buy anything off them anymore ever again. I just thought I wanted to make it famous that uh, these sort of people exist out there and they were totally, completely serious at quoting me £167 for that piece of crap. Oh, by the way, how did I get one? Well, I got this friendly guy on eBay, Freebay, who sold me one for $50. Nice. Okay, well, I'm going to be wrapping up any second now, and uh, what I'd say is uh, don't forget to visit my website, www.turnymackenzie.com, or indeed YouTube, if you watch this on my uh, website. I've got a whole YouTube channel at youtube.com slash tonymackenzie.com without the dot. And uh, anybody over 39, like I said earlier, go and get checked by your doctor for prostate cancer. I'm sure it'll help you, assuming you got it. And if you haven't got it, aren't you lucky? You'll stay around a bit longer. Anyway, watch out for these other reviews and the tube checker and all that stuff. They're all giving me separate little things, including a review of these things, whether they are actually any good or whether they're not. The pedal, the tube checker. They are. That's at least four reviews. It's going to keep me going for ages. Thanks for watching. Here it comes now. Rock and roll. So, here's the Electrodyne amp. Uh, it's being used to a 1960 B cab, which is, used, is usually Celestian G75, something like that. Uh, I like these cabs. This is the big fat one, reminds me of the missus, but uh, I usually go for the skimpy ones myself. But it's Christmas, she's gained a bit, so uh, you get a bit of a fat tone out of this one. <laughs> anyway, there's the amp. All nice and pretty, turned on. It's in its uh, it's in its clean channel at 45 watts. I daren't hit 90 in here, even though it's a studio. It's, it, uh, it's a bit loud. So for the clean, nice clean channel. You've got to clean. In fact, it's very clean. If you get that reverb cranked up, you get these really nice sort of. So 
It sounds very nice and clean with that sort of fendery tone. It sounds fendery to me. Be a bit like less mid and a bit more presence even. But it's very uh <laughs> Six or six as it came with uh, for this particular demonstration, and I'll be using the, uh, the big fat ones. Let me fetch them. I'll be using the uh, Svetlana Wing C's EL34s later on, so you can put, compare. I'll probably sli slither that's the word <laughs> slither in. You've just heard the six or sixes, so you'll either use the EL34s next. And then uh, what you'll hear is uh, a mixture of the other sounds that come out of this Electrodyne. It's not a bad amp. Uh, it's very sort of, uh, like they say, martial driven type of thing. But with 6L6s you don't quite get that martial tone. But I think you will with the EL34s. And another thing uh, that some guys were talking about. Oh, it's very flubby. It's flubby. Them are the words they used. That's comical. That's got the wrong speaker cap or something, I don't know. This isn't flubby at all. It isn't flubby at all, it's really... Uh... I got it wrong. <laughs> don't worry, who cares. Okay, so that's a clean channel. Okay, well now I have exactly the same amp settings. I never changed a thing on the front. All I changed was the actual tubes for EL34 Wing C's spec one. Do you know where? <laughs> anyway, there it is. Here's the clean. It's less clean, of course, but it's still pretty clean. And you could back off that. I mean, I have the, I have the actual drive at about two o'clock. You can back that off, and I have the master at nine o'clock. So you could back one off and crank the other and. Have a very clean tone. To me, it sounds quite nice. Let's turn that back off and whip it across to the, uh, the low channel. Okay, I'm already. Ah, that's probably better. Who knows? Well, they said this was more martial in these two channels and more fendery in the first channel. To be honest, I think the 6L60s did sound more fendery, if you know what I mean, in the clean channel. But when you came to these other two channels, uh, the 6L60s didn't sound quite martially enough. Now, I don't know what this sounds like. I literally have just plugged the tubes in. So let's see. Let's see what we get. More jagged, isn't it? and I haven't really changed anything. Uh, I just flipped the switch down to low. You can see it's now blue where it used to be, I think, white or green or something. I don't know. And now we got this other channel. <laughs> Moving on 
to the uh, the third channel. We'll call them channels. Look like channels to me. It's almost like a dual channel with a boost. That's what I'd say. But irrespective. Anyway, moving on to channel. Hi, it says. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this is the Hi channel. Yeah. Everything's turned up just the same as it was. I haven't changed a single thing on the amp. Uh, it's definitely like a, an ACDC. It's definitely a... Yeah, yeah, rock and roll. It's definitely ACDC territory. But what if you wanted to go further than that? I guess it could be a bit of a problem, right? Now, I did do uh, a review on a, a Mesa pedal I've got on the floor here, uh, a Tone Burst. And the thing is with a Tone Burst, if you coop that in, coop that in, kick that in, <laughs> I'll have it with onions. <laughs> yeah, well, it will fry the tone a bit. Uh, because when you do kick it in, you just turn it with it in. It's more like that. high channel which is the flat out channel for the electrodyne which isn't so flat out so I still have that tone burst pedal down there if we want to switch that in which we will do no doubt so clean now we're on high remember these are EL 34s uh, and that's the point about this section of the video these are not what Mesa talk about much in the manual when you read the manual they keep harping on about 606 606 606 and they just have a little brief section that says EL 34 thanks goodbye <laughs> yeah just because they probably made it in England or something I don't know <laughs> but there you go we're now on the the red light heavy or high let's see what that sounds like <laughs> out of EL34s even if you did out of 6L6s so this amp uh, you need to grab one <laughs> while they're still around uh, this one wasn't very old as you saw in the video and uh, what a bargain uh, very very cheap for what it was you know the price of Mesa in England so you got there's no forbiness <laughs> end of this amp so we see what we really get out of the L34s with a, an overdriven amp well an overdriven input it's in
there you have it, the Electrodyne. It's a great amp, uh, especially for the money, because you can buy them uh, relatively low cost these days, uh, compared to what you would have paid. I think they were a couple of thousand dollars, which would have equated to two thousand pounds in England. So, uh, for the deal, for what it is, it's, uh, it's a fantastic piece of kit. Really well, kit? Gear? <laughs> That's just England. It's really well made, like I said, and uh, I don't regret buying this one because you can drive it or you can back it off with the guitar if you're that type of guy. And if you're playing 80 stuff or 70 stuff or even maybe 60 stuff, you back it down, you can get uh, those turns out of it uh, very easily, actually. I want to thank uh, uh, the Academy of Sound for loaning me the Empress pedal and uh, DNA. Let's not forget them for the uh, using the uh, you know the guitar stand, uh, which I thought was awesome. It's still on it now. Uh, works great actually. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't believe how good they are. Uh, but that's another story, which you'll have to go onto my channel, www.youtube.com slash Tony Mackenzie Com without the dot to see it. As indeed the Empress review, or as indeed the Mesa Tone Burst review which are all on there or will be any time now hope you liked it uh, I'll just finish off with a, a bit of another track I'll find something or maybe I won't <laughs> it depends what mood I'm in uh, yeah time's quacking on man cracking on as well <laughs> no not that sort of crack see you soon rock and roll <laughs>